If you're watching this video, there's a good chance you've seen some of my other critiques of James Rolfe. In my last video, The State of Cinemassacre 2022, I mentioned that I really only watched the nerd episodes and wasn't really interested in anything else Cinemassacre had to offer. There are more than a couple of people who were shocked that I had never seen Bored James. And the truth is, I had tried watching a couple of episodes of Bored James back in the day, but the concept of watching James and his friends play board games did not appeal to me whatsoever. But several people in my comment section insisted that I give Bored James a second chance. Well, in 2023, I finally went back and watched all of the Bored James episodes. So stick around and I'll give you my thoughts. This is Dancing with Ghosts. Back when I got into the Angry Video Game Nerd, I noticed on his YouTube channel other content aside from the Nerd series. He would review horror films in a series called Monster Madness. I definitely don't share James's love of old horror movies or the horror movie genre in general, so I skipped this series. There was James and Mike Mondays, in which James Rolfe and his friend Mike Matei would do Let's Plays of Retro Video Games. I've never been interested in watching other people play video games, so I skipped this series as well. Although I will say from what little I did see, it became clear to me that James was not a very interesting personality when he had to talk off script. It also seemed like Mike Matei was the more passionate gamer out of the two. Then there was the You Know What's Bullshit series, which I actually really enjoyed, but the videos were so short it was easy to binge the whole series in an hour or so. Then there was Bored James. Aside from the angry video game nerd, Bored James was easily the most fleshed out of all of James's side projects. But the concept seems so horrible to me on paper. Is this dude really going to play board games with his friends and make an entire show out of that? So the first seven episodes were pretty much exactly what I expected. Hey, remember Mousetrap, the game that nobody actually played, we just wanted to set up the trap? Hey, remember Dragon Strike? Me neither. James actually covers a lot of board games I've never heard of or even saw on sale at the store when I was a kid. He tends to avoid the classic board games like Clue or Monopoly. By episode 3, Crossfire, a game which I only remember from the ridiculously catchy theme song in the commercial, James is joined by Mike Matei's character, Motherfucker Mike. It was refreshing and almost, dare I say, nostalgic to see an actual friend of James in one of his videos instead of the screen wave hired help. Almost every video going forward would feature Motherfucker Mike, which again, after knowing how things ended up between these two, is kind of bittersweet in a way. Even so, the series was pretty fucking boring thus far, and I couldn't believe that this was the show that everyone in my comment section was going on about as being great, but I pressed on. By episode 8, Mr. Bucket, I started to see what some of the hype was about. I remembered this stupid-ass game from the commercials I saw on TV as a kid. All jokes in this episode about Mr. Bucket wanting to eat your balls were sophomoric and kind of hilarious. James used to have a really adept ability at using toilet humor in just the right way for it to be funny. These days, all the jokes feel forced, but back then, James still had passion for what he was doing, and it was none more obvious than this episode. James and motherfucker Mike start playing the Mr. Bucket game, then Mike eventually gets bored and goes home. James puts the game away, but Mr. Bucket comes alive and stalks James around his house, wanting, you guessed it, his balls. I'm Mr. Bucket! Oh, no, no, no. It's okay. I don't want to hurt you. I just want to suck on your balls. <laughs> the fact that up until this point, the show was just two dudes playing board games in a room, and now we're experiencing essentially an amateur psychological thriller, was definitely a twist in the series. By episode 9, we are introduced to Bad Luck Bootsy, the third and final character in the Board James series. Bad Luck Bootsy? Oh, oh, Bad Luck Bootsy? You had to He's an it. asshole. He's a dude he had. That dude, like, fucked a frog one time. He's fuck face. He's an idiot. He sucks his own dick. Oh, come on. Ugh. Bootsy. Since I had never seen this series, I had no feelings about Bootsy one way or another, but man, this dude exudes a goofy like ability. James, Mike, and Bootsy play Tornado Rex, and the video ends with Bootsy getting his eye shot out by one of the game pieces. For several episodes after this, Bootsy would have an eye patch, which I thought was a nice touch of continuity. And if you've read James Rolfe's new book, then you know he's all about continuity. 
The next notable episode was Loop and Louie. I swear, where the fuck did James find all these board games? I have heard of like three of them. Anyway, in this episode, James brings the Loop and Louie board game to the PAX 2011 Video Game Expo. I wouldn't say there's any kind of plot to this video. I think it was more of an interesting idea that made for compelling content. We see James play Loop and Louie at the convention with such YouTube style warts as Angry Joe and Derek Alexander. Which I thought was interesting seeing as Derek arguably bit off of some of James's clout by starting out as the happy video game nerd. He's the happy Nintendo nerd. He's a happy Atari Sega nerd. He's the happy video game nerd. I guess they had made peace by this point, or James didn't know who the hell this guy was. For me, the series took a dip for the next few episodes, especially episode 17. Nookie dookie 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 nookie dookie nookie dookie. Oh, good doggy, good doggy. Oh, time to shit. Time to shit, doggy. Oh, 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 James and Mike spurging out over a plastic dog that shits fake Play-Doh turds might have been novel back in 2012, but now it's nearly unwatchable. However, the very next episode, Shark Attack, was hilarious, and that was for one reason, Bootsy. Even though I'm sure James wrote Bootsy's dialogue, he just pulls off this nitwit character flawlessly, and his infatuation with wanting to fuck the plastic shark was hilarious. I could really see why fans had such a soft spot for Bootsy. Okay, so up until this point in the series, I thought, this show was rough around the edges, some episodes were worth my time, others were kind of garbage, and I still didn't understand the hype. But episode 19 and every episode that followed finally made me understand. Episode 19 was a turning point in the show, and I don't know if James had even originally planned for this to happen, but Board James went from a goofy show about three friends playing obscure board games to a psychological comedic horror series involving board games. Episode 19, or the Dream Phone episode, sees the three friends playing the hilariously ridiculous Dream Phone game, which is basically a process of elimination game. Teenage voices in the phone give you clues to help you deduce which guy likes you. At a certain point in the video, James says, Like, imagine if it's the same exact game, same rules and everything, but instead of trying to find a guy who likes you, it's all about solving a murder case. (laughs) James returns back to his house with the game, and much like the Mr. Bucket episode, the Dream Phone comes to life. But instead of a girl's voice, it's some malevolent being that starts terrorizing James. Soon James finds that whoever the voice is in the phone has systematically killed his friends. The episode ends with James' typical crude practical effects and the phone lunges toward James holding a knife. This was definitely an unexpected turning point in the series and I once again have to wonder, was this always the plan for the series or did James just really want to make a show about board games but then randomly got the idea to take the show in this meta type direction? Every episode following Dream Phone would see James acting more and more bizarre. His character would start hallucinating, and it was insinuating the fact that he was the one who killed his friends and not the Dream Phone. Episode number 22, Ouija slash Domino Rally, sees bored James try to resurrect Mike and Bootsy from the dead using the Ouija board. It seemingly works, and the gang is back together again. The last few episodes of this series are easily the best. The Full House and Urkel Games episode was hilarious with just how cheesy 90s marketing went into making these family sitcoms into board games. If you land on a Joey joke space, you draw a Joey joke card, you tell the joke, and then you get an extra turn. I was pretty crazy in the 70s. Now I can get crazy at any temperature. <laughs> to say, these jokes are not funny at all. I love working in television, but they're getting so small and the wires get in the way. Oh my God. And those fucking Steve Urkel glasses. I never knew I could laugh and be creeped out at the same time. Episode 25 features board games based on video games, and we get an AVGN slash board games collaboration, which is impressive, seeing as both characters are played by the same person. The second to last episode sees Bored James' psychosis come back, and he again terrorizes his friends by forcing them to play a game called 13 Dead End Drive. Mike and Bootsy ultimately try to escape, but end up getting hanged when James' murderous alter ego reemerges. The final episode of Bored James is easily one of James' most ambitious short films outside of the AVGN movie, but this one is actually watchable. James, Mike, and Bootsy find themselves on the set of 13 Dead End Drive and are dead. Does that mean we're all dead? We are all very dead. 
So I don't know if this is some kind of dream sequence or fantasy ending, but I'm not really taking an internet show about board games too seriously. James is still in deranged psychopath mode and forces Mike and Bootsy to play the game Nightmare. Mike ends up losing the game, and the three are transported to some nether realm where James uses Mike as a human operation game and Bootsy as a hangman game. The blood and gore effects are very DIY, and to me that adds to the comedy. At this point, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be funny, but I found myself laughing anytime Bootsy got a limb cut off or this alligator attack. James explains that whoever dies first gets to choose the next game, but then Bootsy requests them to play Candyland, which was a game he commonly wanted to play throughout the series. What ensues next is one of the most bizarre yet funny sequences I've ever seen on Cinemassacre. During the Candyland sequence, things start getting very Inception-esque with games being played within games, and I feel like the plot gets buried a bit here. They finally end up playing Battleship, and Bored James is seemingly destroyed by a missile launched by Mike's battleship. The last scene zooms inside James's sunken battleship to reveal a pile of tattered board games and a human skeleton, which I'm assuming is Bored James. And that's how the series ends. As someone who didn't watch this show when it first came out, I gotta say, as a whole, Bored James, to me, is a mixed bag. Much like the angry video game nerd, there are some classics, and then there are some duds. This was a much shorter series than AVGN, so in my opinion, I would say about half the series is worth watching, and the other half is kind of boring. The best parts of Bored James is when Mike, James, and Bootsy interact and argue over the games they're playing. Uh, After being forced to tolerate the screen wave goons for the past few years, it was nice to see James interact with people he actually had chemistry with and who were his real friends. Chemistry like that can't be bought. I also liked James' very DIY style when he uses practical effects. It has a certain charm to it that honestly makes the show more endearing. And it's not like Bored James is being marketed as this like very serious, amazing piece of cinema. It's an internet web series that was very ambitious for its time on YouTube. I can say I now understand why the fans were so upset when in my previous videos I had stated that I had never seen Bored James. There truly were some very entertaining content in some of the episodes, and it was refreshing to go back to the past and see James before he became the completely burnt out shell of who he used to be. Wow, that ended kind of dark, didn't it? Um, Well, it's true. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's one that I've been meaning to make for a long time, so I'm glad I finally put it out there. Uh, Anyway, until next time, I'm Josh Cannon. Have a good rest of your night.